You know, when I broke the dishes, for me dishes is like soft soul of people. Any dishes is different, the big and small, with the gold plates and without it, like we are, you know? We are rich or poor, we are nice or not really, so... But everybody, after the pressure, everybody, it's easy to, to broke us, you know? Like, if somebody pressure us, it's easy to broke, so... For me, dishes is soul of people. And installation, the dishwashers is made like uh, contemporary, modern, the uh, architectural, our life again, you know. When I say architectural, I don't mean like buildings architectural, I mean the life arch architectural. This is a piece from Erwin Olaf, who is one of the most well-known Dutch contemporary artists. And this is a piece from 2000 called Fashion Victim. And it's actually a self-portrait. Every 10 years, he do his, his portrait. That's the, the most... Uh, tame piece of the series. The other piece of the series have naked people. The other, other character of the other series are naked and they're actually porn stars. And basically he tried to express the pornography of being fa a fashion victim, of thinking that a brand give you your personality. He liked brand as well, but he thought that at some point he became uh, alienated in a way, a victim of the brand, because if he had no brand, he felt he was nobody. So he wanted to step back and say, it became pornographic, this, this over-alienation with brand. I don't, still don't know whether you're born as an artist or you're... I think you sort of come into the world with, hopefully, with something there. I come out of a lineage of painters back in Europe, in Holland, that were landscape and still life painters. But when I moved here to the States about 20 years ago, it was something that I, I wanted to reinvent. So. What I found was that by abstracting the landscape and sort of finding my own métier in my own landscape, it became more and more an abstract sort of um, form of the landscape. But the interesting thing is that even when a painting looks very abstract, most people still feel the landscape in it. Mm -hmm. Mixed media, I actually use a very thin layer of cement as my foundation layer. So it's sort of a fresco technique on a canvas. And then I paint into it with layers, very thin layers of paint and glaze it over. So that you get sort of a holographic effect at the end where different times of the day with different light hitting the canvas, you see different layers. So what I hear from my collectors, and that's what I love to hear, is that they feel the painting never is finished. It always keeps changing with them. Uh, honestly, it was an accident, to tell you the truth. It was just, uh, just kind of doing a lot of soul searching and really art was one of the only things that really uh, gave me true... Uh, it really helped me find myself, to tell you the truth. So honestly, it was a happy, a happy accident, so it was good. I mean, I'm more kind of going for balance and harmony in my work, really just trying to find simplicity and, and you know, and just to kind of balance my own life out. It's more just kind of an inside inside coming out, really. So I got a, I got a pretty good sized shop in San Diego and a lot of big tooling and machines and just that I've acquired over time and, you know, one, one machine at a time and, and they just kind of open up doors and allow you to do different stuff. And um, so it's, uh, I mean, honestly, one piece for me leads to the next piece. It's, you know, a lot of times I'll be working on one piece and there'll be, scraps laying around from another piece that inspires something else that might inspire a whole different line and it's definitely it's it's fulfilling but really scary at the same time because you know you're really putting yourself out there and kind of hope that hope that people like it a lot of times they don't see it until it's being delivered and I, I use a lot of repetition in my work like I'll take one piece like this is just this these are six pieces exactly the same multiplied that that piece is like a hundred couple hundred pieces all exactly the same so I use a lot of repetition I'm really trying to maximize minimalism and kind of what I can do with one single piece and and using that over and over and over again so on the bigger pieces I usually start with a maquette you know build a smaller one first just to get the idea and uh, and then from there, kind of break it down, kind of materials, what I need for materials, and basically just start cutting and sanding. And then, you know, I have big rollers at my studio, so send these to the rollers to get the right arc that, I, that I'm happy with, and then literally just start putting the pieces together. And I have a maquette that I'm going off, but usually it changes. Like, it's usually just to get me going and get me in a certain direction. And then once the piece starts shaping, taking shape, it kind of, I kind of let the maquette go and just go from there. So. This all uh, combine Asian cultures, uh like Chinese culture and I use the Chinese dollars in here and Taiwan dollars of uh, my artwork and all have all my artwork have LED lights and uh, 
currency in here. Now we have more and more artists who are blending the Chinese tradition with using contemporary method of making artworks. For example, this tiger in Chinese tradition is considered a sign, a symbol with strength and power. So with an and the artist Money Hu combines the tiger, the strength and power with money, which is a contemporary meaning of power in a lot of ways. So the flag, I use the optical lenses here to do these flags. And uh, all lenses is prescription, is minus and plus lenses. And the idea about the flag, you know, when I did the flags, like plus lenses is mean the, usually lenses is means the people, people vision. And the plus lenses means people who like the, American minus lenses who doesn't work. But doesn't matter you like or not, you concentrate in the US now. And behind the lenses or article about the US also. So behind the minus lenses the bad article, behind the plus lenses the article the positive article. I think that artists are an interesting breed of people because what makes art really, an artist is the catalyst for making art. Why is it that there are millions of people in the world, but you find that there's a certain, uh, you know, population that, who become artists because they are absolutely compelled to create art. And that is, it really is an expression, and the expression many times has to do with what's happening in the world, and it's, uh, from all the artists that we've known and we work with, what I found is that in talking to them, that the reasoning behind the creating, uh, sometimes they have no choice. I mean, they really do have to create that, and their statement is, you know, within their art, their expression is within their work.